Have you guys ever wanted to play like Graham Potter in Football Manager 22? If you have, then do stick around for this video because I've recreated his 4-3-3 and trust me, it's a good one. So guys, welcome to the video. It is Josh from FM Scout here. And if you guys do enjoy this video, please do leave a like on it and also do subscribe to the FM Scout YouTube channel. There's tons of content to watch on this channel and trust me, it is really good stuff. Today's video though, we are going to be going over Graham Potter's 3-4-3 FM22 tactic. It's a very, very good tactic. I've tested it with three very different teams and the results are really good. But let's get into it and break down the results. So... The first test we're actually going to do is going to be where Graham Potter started, which is going to be in the Swedish league. We're going to be testing with Ostersunds FK, a team that are predicted to finish 16th. So definitely not got the highest expectations. But for us, we actually done very well, finishing in fifth place, scoring 68 goals and only conceding 35. Jordan Kadari with our top B and our top goal scorer with 27 goals and Nebedu Perry coming in with 12 assists. Now, with this tactic, especially when you are using a smaller team, it's all about outscoring because it is quite an attacking tactic at the end of the day. It's free at the back. So what I've done for you guys is in the description, you can also find my Graham Potter free 5 2 Now, this is slightly more defensive. Um... So what I would recommend is download them both. Download this one and download that one, sorry. And sort of pick in between as you go in during the game. Obviously, if you go 1-0 up, start them with the 3-4-3. Switch to the 3-5-2 to be a little, more, little bit more defensive. Same as if you want to go into a game a little bit more cautiously, do use the 3-5-2. And then if you go a goal down, you can always switch to the 3-4-3. It's all about balancing them out and seeing exactly what you think is best. But no, this save went really, really well. In terms of the actual Data Hub stats... Team attacking, we're sitting at 2.27 goals a game, which is obviously very, very good. That's over two goals a game scored with a pass completion of 92%, which again is very high. In terms of defending, 1.17, so we're scoring double what we're actually conceding, which is always a good sign. It means you should be winning quite a few of your games as we did. Now, obviously, these stats did get better as we tested with better teams. Um, obviously, this team are quite a weak side compared to a team that we're going to be testing later on in the video, which I'm pretty sure you guys can guess. But again, this is still not bad stats at all. 1.17 conceded, team attacking, as we mentioned, 2.27. So scoring a lot more goals than we are conceding. And finishing fifth, considering we were predicted to finish 16th, is a massive, 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 massive over accomplishment. Now, going over to the second save, we're going to be testing with his former club. Feels very weird saying that now. He's only been gone a few days. That is going to be with Brighton. We then go over and we tested with Brighton, as I mentioned. And again, we over-accomplished here as well, finishing in fifth place, where considering, obviously, Brighton in real life, they are a great side, but I think any Brighton fan would take top six any day of the week. Um, European football at the end of the day. Um, also, not the best performance in the English Cups, the fourth round versus Watford. This one I'm not too annoyed about because at the end of the day, it is Tottenham in the Carabao Cup. Getting to the semi-finals again is a very good accomplishment with Brighton. A lot more improvements here in terms of the goals so 77 goals scored here 51 conceded with this one it was a little bit closer obviously as i mentioned before it is real really key to switch between the 4-3-3 and the 3-5-2 obviously when i do a holiday test with these tactics i only use the tactic i'm creating and that is why a few of these games in my opinion could have went differently if you're managing yourself but again very good stats coming out of the players 45 goals for Danny Welbeck in all competitions, which again is very good, especially at his age. Um, Trossard, who I thought is, was going to be the top goal scorer, to be honest, because he is probably the most dangerous player, actually ended up being the most assists with 18 assists. You've got Adam Webster with a 98% pass completion, which is very, very good indeed. Going over to the data hub then. Team attack, and we're going to be seeing two goals scored again, so over two, which is impressive. This is what is really standing out to me. 91% pass completion in this division with a Brighton side is very very high obviously in this division you're going to have tougher teams players that can win the ball back easier better players better teams that can press so to maintain the ball not mess up many passes at all in such a tough division with these players just shows how good this tactic is in terms of team defending 1.34 so slightly more but obviously we are playing in a tougher division a lot better teams when it comes to having attack and players obviously man city with the harland liverpool with the salars as we go on and on um but still, where we finished with this season, considering we didn't do what I mentioned about switching between tactics here and there, it's still very impressive. A fifth place finish and getting to the semi-finals of the Carabao Cup. 
third best for goals scored. Obviously, you know, it is a very, very good season. And so far, we've only tested. We've tested with one really weak team. We've tested with sort of a mid-table team. And the team we're going to test with next is going to be an elite team, which is going to be with his current club, Chelsea. And this is what happens when you test with a top team. Obviously, it's pretty much common sense, but the better players you have, the better the tactic's going to look. That is why I always do my best to show one as a lower league team, one as a mid table and one as a high team, because that way you're going to get a rough idea of what you're actually going to get. Now, so when you test with a top team as Chelsea are, we managed to win the Premier League and the Super Cup, getting all the way to the Champions League final. And unfortunately, we do lose 2-1 in that game against Liverpool. Um, again, semi-final against Manchester City. This is the disappointing one. Manchester United, I do feel like we could have beaten. And it's only the quarterfinals there. But in terms of the actual stats of the season, obviously 38 matches played, 93 goals scored, ranking us the best, and only 18 conceders. Conceded? Conceded, sorry. Ranking us the best in that category as well. Now, this is just, it goes to show what happens when you do use a top tier team. The stats completely get flipped on the head and you get, you really get to see what the tactic is fully capable of. Now, you've got Kai Havertz contributing with 54 goals here. You've got Wesley Fofana with the highest match rating, sitting at 7.85. Reese James contributing with 28 assists from right back, showing how important these fullbacks are in this system. Now, if we go over to the data hub, this is where it's going to blow your minds because it blew my mind. Team attack him. 2.45 goals scored. Now, you might think, yeah, okay, that's only a little bit more, but it's a defending, which really does blow my mind in this team. And we're going to go over to the pass completion quickly here as well. I want to point this out. This is getting on for 93%. Now, that is ridiculously high for this game. Um, a very, very impressive pass. And obviously, we have got better players on the ball in this team. Hence why it's going to be... It's, it's obviously going to be slightly better than what a Brighton side would be. But again, Brighton were able to get, what was it, 91? Getting on for 92? Chelsea are getting on for 93% pass completion, which is a very big thing when you're doing a Graham Potter tactic. But this is where it really does stand out for me. And it shows how good this tactic can be defensively as well if you've got the right players. 0.47 with a three at the back system is very unheard of. It's a very, very good stat line. Obviously, expected us to concede 0.66. We went above and beyond that and only conceded 0.47. Now, tackle win ratio isn't going to be the highest to the highest because there are some players that are going to be getting sort of, you know, stuck in tackle harder etc etc if you guys do want to get that up for whatever reason then you can simply just take some of them tackle harder options off and then you'll see a little bit more of a disciplined game but this was all about recreating how graham potter plays and in his game style sometimes there is the odd foul if we're being honest but what we're going to do now is something that i love to do in my videos is we're going to go into an actual game into sort of like a 2d footage is the way to i'd describe it and we're going to break down the tactic and see some of the goals that are scored and this is going to be the game i've picked out it's going to be a 5-0 win versus leicester and i just want to show you how it lines up right off the rip i always do it so we're going to have obviously the three at the back here we've got chabala Fafana, and also tiago silva this is going to be the four obviously the fullbacks are quite pushed up almost look like wingers in a sense you're going to have kukarela you're going to have kovacic and kante in the middle and reese james on the right and this is your front three you're going to have sterling Havertz and also Mount. Now, this game is one I picked out in particular because apart from the first goal, which is a set piece, you're going to get to see a good sort of visualizer of how the goals do end up happening in terms of the passing. You're going to see a good mix. So we're going to get right into it because obviously there are quite a few goals. The first one we're not going to talk about too much because it is a set piece, but this game is really a good one for me to show you purely because of how the pass and play builds up. So right off the rip here, you're going to see what we need to see here is Chabala going obviously into Thiago Silva, but this, this pass here, so Mason Mount, if you saw there, he bursts away from me and actually to get in this little pocket of space here. And also I want you to pay attention to Havertz here because Havertz has got two decisions here. He can come short for the ball um, or he can get in behind. Also, another option on the ball, which is why the fullbacks play such an important role here, is Kukurela is actually in behind here. He's sort of, Ricardo sort of left him. So Kukurela can actually make a dart and run in behind here. Kovacic has got several options. He can play it into Kante, which will obviously open up that entire side of the pitch. He can play it into, obviously, Kukurela, with quite a simple diagonal pass. He can play it into the upcoming Mount, which I'm pretty sure he will do, as we're going to see here. So he plays it into Mount. Again, Mason Mount here. Few options. Can go short to Havertz and possibly run in behind himself. Or Havertz can make a run in behind. 
or he can go diagonal here again. What I'm trying to show you is how many options are available to this player on the ball. He actually does end up playing it through in behind to Kai Havertz, who completely sends the keeper the wrong way and tucks it into the bottom corner of the net. So that just shows how many options are on the ball when you're playing with this system. Going over to the next goal, then we've got Mason Mount. Now, this is a lot of short passes, so I'll do my best to keep up. But this shows how these goals look and how important it is to Graham Potter to create these type of goals. So you've got Mason Mount into Havertz. Look at the options again. Now, what we're going to witness here is the first triangle. Now, this is what you want to see when you're playing this sort of style. Triangles are so good in football because it's basically three different players and obviously them three players are going to have various different options. So, for example, we'll see where it goes next. Havertz goes into Kante. Again, the triangle's slightly moving here, but Kante has always got the option now to cover Chich. He could have went back if he wanted to. And also look at the space we've got here in Thiago Silva. With this, there's so many options going on. The other team, can they literally can't compete with it because there's always a pass which they can't read. So... Back into Kovacic, into Havertz again, the final part of the triangle. And then again, you've got Raheem, St oh, Mason Mount, sorry, here in absolutely acres of space. Um, he can also go short into Sterling here. Um, so we'll see what he does. He plays it into Mount, who actually, Sterling, bursts away from Johnny Evans and puts it into the bottom left-hand corner. So again, when you do have them triangles forming, it's very hard for teams to defend every single option. It's practically impossible. You then have Pulisic on the ball here, back into Kante. Again, lovely passing going on here. Pulisic run a little bit wide of it into Sterling, who does hit it on the outside of the box and scores what is going to be the fourth goal. Going into the fifth goal then, the last goal of the game, it's going to be Raheem Sterling, you, this is the what the rare occasion you are going to see a ball going over the top. You will see the occasion a ball getting played from one of the deeper players in midfield, but usually across the front three, it is quite short passing. But obviously there was a good run on, and I'm kind of glad he did find it. It's going to be Pulisic again. Good point to pause it here. Look at the options in the box. Obviously, you've got a player coming in here in Jorginho, one of the midfield players who is going to be a centre mid, who I believe is going to be on the automatic role. And if this does, hopefully it aims up to what I want it to be, because this is a really good explanation of the role. It does. So Jorginho gets into the box. He is told to do that. And that is for the exact reason that when they do get into the box, they do score goals. And you've seen that pretty much bang on there. And that is why I always love to show you guys a part of the 2D in-game sort of analysis, because it shows you on the football sort of map how the players move. And this game obviously was a complete domination. Um, I didn't really, you know, have intention of showing you the stats, but feel free to take it in. It's an absolute destruction of Leicester. But let's get into the tactic breakdown and explain it a little bit more. So this is going to be the 3-4-3 three, three then. Now, what I would highly recommend, I do want to keep saying it, is that you guys do also download the 3-5-2 because obviously you can just simply flick in between formations and it will make it a lot easier to do in-game and also before games and you guys can decide how you want to approach each game. Now, in possession, you guys want to be having shorter passes selected, lower tempo, attack and whip set to wide, overlap on the right and also the left, mix crosses and be more expressive. In transition, you want to have counter press selected, distribute to the centre backs and also roll it out. Going over to out of possession, you want to have a higher line, um, defensive line that is, and a higher line of engagement with force opposition outside. Trigger press you want on much more often. This I did have on, but I was picking up a few, quite a few bookends. Now, because a few players are told to tackle harder already, that can cause it. So if you guys do want to pick up, not pick up a few more bookends, but if you guys do want to get aggressive, then simply, you know, have this on. If you guys want to be a lot more disciplined, have this on. If you guys want to go with what i done, which is sort of in the middle, then have nothing selected. That works really well for me. Going over to the player roles then, again, a few of these players are, they are very different roles, so we're going to go over every single player. The sweeper keeper you want on the support role, again, nothing selected for this guy, quite basic duties to be honest with you. Going over to what is going to be the three at the back, now, I'm going to show you one wide centre back because they are the same um, sort of instructions, but one thing I will say is do not switch from a wide centre back to a central defender, apart from the one that we've got in the middle, because... You've got a picture when you guys obviously have your fullbacks pushing up. These players up here are on attack and duty, so they're not going to defend and track back. So when your fullbacks do push up, as you did see, obviously, with the amount of assists that Reese James got, I think it was 28, um, you do leave yourself vulnerable at the back. But when you've got wide centre backs, they will literally come sort of out to here. So if a ball does get played over the top, you've always got a defender to cover that wing back. But if you guys do have three central defenders, you're going to sabotage yourself. So make sure you do have two wide centre-backs. Now, 
You want them on the defend duty. You want them on stay wider, obviously, balanced on the press and shorter pass and selected. That is exactly the same instructions for this one and also this one. In the central, you want a ball playing defender on the cover. The most expressive centre back we've got in this team, balanced on the press and shorter pass and selected. Going over to the fullbacks, and again, exactly the same instructions. There's no reason to tweak something that's not broken. So I'm going to show you one of these again because they are exactly the same. Do you want them on the wing back, on support? This basically means they are going to get up and down the pitch, balanced on the press, get further forward, run wide with the ball, shorter passing, and aim the crosses at the centre. Now, you also, in the midfield, now this is probably, in my opinion, the most important player in the team because he's the one player that is going to look for them long balls and, as we did see, they do occasionally come off. So, deep line playmaker on the defend duty. You want him on trigger press on much more often. Tackle harder, more direct passing. Now, with this player, what you're going to get is he is still going to play it short. He's not just going to constantly thump it up the pitch. But having one player that does go slightly more direct is really useful because you've got two wingers at the end of the day that are quite attacking. They are going to make diagonal runs. So if you've got one player in the team that is looking for him constantly, it is going to be a very good, very good outcome. And this guy did occasionally pluck off a pretty much a wonder ball. And having it on this just means that he never really will go with it. So having it on more direct is exactly what you need. Obviously, you don't want it on the max of the max, but more direct passing on one player in the team is a very good option to have. Going over to his partner in midfield, which is going to be a centre midfield player on the automatic duty. You want him to be told to be balanced on the press, tackle harder, move into channels and roam from the position. Shorter passing selected and dribble more. Moving over to the left-hand side, obviously different roles here completely. Inverted winger, you want him on attack. You want him on balanced on the press, mark tighter, tackle harder, roam from position, stay wider, get further forward, cut inside with the ball, shorter passing, and take more risks. On the right side, a different role, so it's not the same, inside forward on the attack. The reason why we've got one inverted, one inside, is because they do typically offer something different right and going forward. And... It just really does help with what I'm going to explain next. So, balanced on the press, mark tighter, tackle harder, sit narrower, get further forward, roam from position, cut inside, shorter passing selected, and obviously everything else is sort of preset for you. Now, the reason why the press is quite high up, tackle harder selected on these plays is because Brighton are known for winning the ball quite high up the pitch. So having one player that's slightly more in and then having one that's sort of out wide, these teams get so sort of stuck in, they can't really move. Um, and it goes on to the last position, which will help me explain it again. The last player being a press and forward on trigger press on much more often, shorter pass and selected. Having these three sort of pressing at the same time, tackle harder selected, it means that these players are going to get stuck in and the amount of times that the ball does get won high up the field is really impressive. And when you're playing a team that is weak at the back, whatever, whether they're playing five at the back, four at the back, especially three at the back, if you guys do play a team that has got three at the back, you are going to make them make so many mistakes purely of having this, you know, having this laid out as like this. And them front three do cause a lot of issues for teams and it is very difficult to sort of play out um against them front three as well so you it is a good a good way of playing because it does prevent a lot of teams successfully playing out flawlessly from the back and obviously you also got this midfield player here who does get up who will also apply pressure so it is very difficult for teams to play out against you but this is exactly what i would do guys just to quickly say before the video does come to an end I would have the 343 selected, but I would also download the 352, which is going to be in a description. So download that as well, because then you can simply click this one here, go to load tactic, find it in the downloads folder, and you can simply switch in between both. Now, this is going to be very crucial because obviously it's a, it makes it easy for you guys simply by clicking the one and the two options here. But you can also do that in game and also obviously before games, if you want to go more cautious, then I would recommend playing the 352 purely because obviously you've got that extra midfield play. You've got a box to box added into things and obviously you've got the ball winning midfield player. So it is a lot more defensive and it is you're not going to concede as many goals going in against the top team. And again, if you want to go more attacking in game, you can go from this to this which is obviously a lot more attacking it also the key thing which i've not explained obviously is it gives you more whip having the three four three this is quite a narrow system whereas this one here is quite wide you've obviously got wingers you also got fullback so you can completely make a team have to change their entire game style simply from a click of a finger really going from completely narrow to obviously completely wide it's very difficult to defend against but that is going to be it for me today, guys. I hope you guys have enjoyed this Graham Potter tactic recreation 
If you have, then please do leave a like on this video and do subscribe to the FM Scout YouTube channel. And do be sure to check out all the other videos on the channel, by the way. There's loads of content for you guys to check out. But that is going to be it for me today, guys. And I'll see you in the next one.